So we'll start uh, describing that energy efficiency is the key uh, uh, for improving the competitive competitiveness, com, sorry, competitiveness through innovation and the digitalization to electrical uh, of the electrical sector. So uh, all the products that we are offering can have a connection between them and can give information. Give information to you, to the managers, to the maintenance people in order to improve the consumption, the energy efficiency, and at the end, uh, decreasing the, the, the bill, eh? the, the, the bill that we are paying to uh, for our consumption. Okay, we'll start with uh, that picture. Okay, we will uh, now we we, we will uh, speak about industry 4.0, but uh, we have to start uh, talking about industry 1.0. Okay, uh, so everything started uh, with the steam power. Okay, so when steam power was invented. We apply this kind of technology for starting, uh, for creating machines in order to help us uh, to produce and to create things. Okay, uh, so this is what we that what we call Industry 1.0. Okay, in uh, 1794. Okay, 1794. Then, uh, in 1870s, uh, we changed to Industry 2.0. It means that now uh, we used electricity uh, for uh, manufacturer devices devices or, or, or final uh, final products okay so we are using the, the, the electricity for massive productions okay uh, we are creating machines uh, and now we have uh, con more consumption eh, because we have uh, this kind of, of, of supply and then in 1969 uh, we changed we move we create industry uh, 3.0. So it means that we are using uh, microchips inside of the machines that are producing things. Okay, so now we have uh, personal computers, uh, HMI, uh, computers uh, for uh, manufacturing. Okay, but now all the all the process uh, was uh, was um, controlled by a computer installed uh, near the production. But now everything has changed, okay? Today, today we are talking about something different, which is the Industry 4.0. Now we are talking about uh, Internet of Things, uh, we are talking about connectivity. So now we are not just controlling the production directly on the site, and now we are, we are connecting all the components through Internet or through software, eh, management software, in order to see how we are consuming, how we are producing, or how can uh, improve our efficiency inside of the industry. Now we have Wi-Fi, we, th we have LoRa, Zigbee, 3G, 4G, we'll have 5G, okay? Now we have systems able to interact with another system being inside of the same uh, factory or uh, in different places around the world. So now we are not just controlling uh, the, the the process of, of, of uh, manufacturing things. Now we are controlling everything remotely through software, internet, and having a lot of information that will help us to to take the, the better decisions eh, in order to improve. So uh, today, today we are going to talk about five key factors for improving energy efficiency and productivity in the industry. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the first uh, factor is analysis. We will talk about how we are um, uh, uh, getting information uh, in order to, to do preventive actions, in order to have savings and uh, decision to take the better, the better decisions uh, into the industry, okay, uh, for improving this, uh, this energy efficiency or for uh, decreasing the electricity bill. So at the end, we need uh, power analyzers. We have we need uh, devices in order to get information, store that kind of information, to display this information uh, for be to be in order to be to be checked eh, by, by us, and then to to have uh, or to do, to take the best decision in order to to improve. Uh, then we'll talk about uh, the second factor, which is uh, continuity and eh, service continuity. To ensure continuity of an electric service uh, has a strong impact on productivity rates. It means that uh, if we have a stop in the production, we'll have an indirect cost. 
Okay, so we have to uh, ensure uh, the continuity of the of the service, electrical service, in order to avoid this kind of uh, stops and eh? this kind of uh, indirect cost. So first is analysis with power analyzers, service continuity. We will talk about earth leakage residual current protection, and then we have to take care about the quality, eh? quality of consumption, an essential factor to ensure compliance with the regulations and the continuity of service. It means that also we have devices to check the quality, uh, to check if we are having harmonics or not, if we are having unexpected tripping, uh, trippings or not, uh, depending on our our uh, electrical network. And we have solutions as we as we uh, talk in in one webinar uh, regarding um, regarding filtering of harmonics. Okay, so we are talking about quality. We are talking about reading uh, electrical parameters and avoiding avoiding harmonic. Then uh, the for the the the, the next fa uh, key factor is savings. Okay, in the industry uh, we are able to we are able to connect uh, different uh, different devices like capacitor banks. Okay, uh, different elements that can reduce the energy consumption. Eh? They can reduce the bill. So we'll talk about uh, power factor correction. We'll talk about capacitor banks and how uh, installing this kind of products we will decrease the, the electricity bill at, at the end of the month. And we will uh, we'll uh, we'll talk also about sustainability. So it means the installation of self-consumption systems that will help us to reduce the electricity bill, okay, uh, as well as the sustainability of the environment. Okay, so uh, self-consumption will help us to reduce the CO2 emissions, will help us to reduce the, the bill at the end of the month, also to reduce the, the emissions to all the emissions to the atmosphere. Okay, so this will uh, help us also to, to, meet our, uh, to meet our commitments with the European Union and uh, all, all the commitments that we have with different regulations depending on the country we, we are. Okay, so those are the uh, fifth K factors uh, that we are going to talk uh, today. Okay, uh, analysis. Analysis is an essential element for the preventive uh, uh, action, savings, and decision making achieved uh, with Industry.40. So it means that we must measure, okay, in order to, to know what is happening inside our installations. And we have two ways for measurement, uh, for, uh, for making the measurements. The first one is by uh, continued, uh, continued analysis. So it means through energy management software implementation, EMS. So we'll talk about the fix. Uh, power analyzers in order to get the data and to be displayed into an EMS, uh, BMS software, okay? And the second uh, measurement method uh, is by performing an energy audit. Audit. So it means that we will uh, describe, we will talk about uh, measurements with portable uh, analyzers, okay? During a defined period uh, of time in, in the installation. So those are the two ways to, to to do a measurement. One is by installing fixed devices and getting information by a database, and the second one is making uh, performing audits with uh, with the portable portable analyzer. Okay. Well, uh, continued analysis. Uh, we'll talk about energy management uh, software, energy, energy management systems, uh, billing uh, billing management uh, softwares. Okay. Well, we have to answer uh, those uh, questions, okay? Uh, so the energy management system is based on uh, fifth fundamental questions. When we are consuming, uh, where are we consuming? Uh, what kind of, uh, of quality do we have inside our installations? How, uh, how we are consuming and how much energy are we consuming? If we are capable uh, to, to answer those questions, we will be able to uh, take the, the better decision, okay, in order to uh, improve the energy efficiency and in order to, to decrease the, the bill at the end of the month. So this is the idea, is uh, installing things, installing uh, analyzers, okay, in order to, to, to have the answers of uh, that question. So when we are talking about EMS, uh, Energy Management System, we are talking now about collect, refine and transform energy data in a structured way. So it means that uh, we need to create a database. So we need a software to know how, when, uh, and where we are consuming. When we have to get information hour by hour, eh, or every 15 minutes, or every day, but we we need to know how we are consuming in order to, to <coughs> sorry, uh, 
to have the best uh, to, to get the, 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 the as, as much information as as we need to to take the best decision okay so now uh, it's not uh, only uh, using using the using the bill at the end of the month it's not the the only way to get information now we need to know hour by hour the, those information this is why with an EMS software, we are talking about analysis, we are talking about progress evaluation, and we are talking about identification of anomalies or, or deviation. Okay? We'll talk later in, in, in another slides about that. But if we have all the data, uh, we'll be able to, uh, to make the, the better analysis. Okay? So when we, when we are talking about EMS implementation process, we are talking about PDCA. Okay? PDCA means plan, do, check, react. Okay, and this is a cycle. When uh, the first thing that we have to do when we want to implement an EMS uh, system, okay, or ISO 50001, for example, we have to plan. We have to set the objective with the direction of, of the company. We must know what we want to do uh, by 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 measuring. Okay. Once we set the uh, set the objective, uh, we have to do. We have to implement solutions and processes. So it means we have to start installing devices in different uh, in different switchboards, okay, in different zones of the installation, in order to start collecting the, that information that will help us to reduce the energy or improve the, the the efficiency. Once we install the analyzer, we have to check, okay, we have to measure, we have to monitor, uh, we have to collect the data, we have to verify uh, all the data that we are reading in order to act. Yeah, which is the, the the final the final point? You have to act. You have to take corrective actions uh, and improvement. Uh, we have to take corrective and improvement and improvement actions. So as we, when we have all the information during the period of time that we consider that we need, it will depend on the type of uh, industry that we are measuring. Okay, there are uh, installations uh, where the consumption is very stable, yeah? so we can measure during one month, for example because we know that all the month uh, is the same consumption and we have installations that the consumption is uh, is fluctuating during the month eh? winter summer season etc so maybe we need more time maybe we need one one year of data so it will depend on how uh, how uh, we consume the energy so, so this is why we have also to to set the the objective uh, the objective can be improving the energy efficiency after one year because we need one year of collecting data once we do the corrective actions, we will start again, yeah? planning new things, doing, checking, and, and acting. Okay. Well, uh, measuring helps us to do something. Okay. Measuring is helping us to compare facilities. So when we install power analyzers or meters, uh, this will help us, uh, uh, and we connect through an EMS software to compare consumption by installations, zones, or uses. So it means that uh, we will we will know uh, which uh, consumption do we have in uh, zone one, zone two, zone three, okay, floor one, floor two, floor three, or uh, in, by uses. It means uh, the consumption in um, lighting, in clima, in uh, computers, whatever we we have, okay. Depending on those consumptions, uh, we will start uh, doing uh, doing improvements in the uh, in the in the zone or in the use that is having the higher consumption it means that uh, for example if we are inside an industry and the lighting consumption is one percent of the total and we change all the all the lights to led okay from conventional to led obviously we will improve but if we are if maybe we'll modify uh, the consumption from one percent which is the lighting consumption to open five Yes, we will reduce, but these reducements uh, will not be uh, will not be will not impact in the will not have uh, any impact at the end of, of the month in the bill. Okay, in this situation, if uh, if the clima is the 50% of the consumption, we will uh, have to uh, think about improvement related to clima. Maybe changing the clima stations, maybe ch changing the isolation of of the roof of the whatever. Eh? Uh, but uh, uh, by measuring, we will know we, uh, the, where where do we have the maximum consumption, and in which uh, use or in which zones. Okay, and if we have different installations, the same. We will see which installation is more efficient, which is less, because we will have the total consumption, and we can uh, adopt the 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 good practices in in the best efficiency to the rest of uh, of the installation that we have. 
Measuring also uh, uh, is helping us to compare uh, offer from multiple energy suppliers. So if in our country uh, we have more than uh, one utility, well, and we know uh, how we are consuming, in which period of time, how much energy, etc., we'll be able to negotiate with different utilities or the uh, distribution companies, okay, in order to get the, the better agreement, the better contract, okay. Also, measuring is helping us to detect and avoid different things. Uh, detect and avoid or identify a typical consumption. Uh, well, there are some uh, industries uh, that uh, they don't know, but uh, during the weekend they are not producing, but they have consumption, for example. This is because they are they left connected the aircon or the heating system or the compressor or whatever, and they don't know until they start uh, measuring. After installing analyzers, they will see how uh, uh, how many how much energy are, are they consuming and, uh, during every day. Okay, so they will be able to identify if they are having any atypical consumption. It happened, for example, in Circuiton. Eh? We 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 start measuring and we see that during weekend uh, we have consumptions and we are not working during weekends. And it was uh, because uh, people who clean uh, circuitor connect the aircon uh, in summer or connect the, the the heating system in winter, and they left connecting during the during the, the weekend. Well, after measuring, we 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 check that uh, it happens, and with the software we create uh, some uh, system in order to avoid that. And if we see higher consumption during weekends, we create a calendar, and we are disconnecting the loads. We are disconnecting the lines. If, if there is uh, anyone in, in the office, okay? We are also able uh, to identify billing errors. We can uh, compare the, the, the billing meter, the utility billing meter with, uh, with our uh, measurements and see the, if there is any difference between, between the bill or not. And we are able to detect potential savings and reactive, uh, reactive penalization, okay? If we have to, to pay penalties uh, by reactive energy or maximum demand, uh, maximum demand penalties, okay? If we are exceeding the maximum demand or if we are consuming reactive energy, okay? Then we are simplifying the, the reporting system. Now uh, we have the billing prediction. We know how we are co consuming, Jonathan, okay? Jonathan, sorry. Uh, there are times when you are not here. I don't know if it's a problem with your micro or not. Uh, I don't know. Let me try to move it again. Let me try it now. If not, tell me again. Eh? I will move the micro. Okay, now it's uh, better. By the moment, by the okay. moment, for me, yeah. I don't know the rest of the. Okay. The okay. Okay. Okay, I will uh, I will go forward. If not, if not, just tell me. Okay, tell me again. Well, uh, we are in compliance with energy efficiency legislation. So now we have some uh, standard in, in in European Union that are telling us it's a mandatory to reduce the energy in 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 twenty uh, twenty thirty. Okay, we have to reduce thirty percent, and now they are talking about reducing the consumption. 40%, okay, reducing also the CO2 emissions and improving by installing uh, renewable energies, okay, uh, consumption by renewable sources, okay. So we have to be in compliance with that standards. Also, uh, reporting will help us to, to have the ROI, the return of investment, okay. We will know how much money uh, do we uh, invest in our installation and how we are recovering this, uh, the, that, that investment that we are doing, okay? By simplifying the data reporting system, we will have now a report that will be sent automatically at the end of the month to the maintenance people, to the account department without doing anything. So by measuring with an EMS, uh, we will be able to create the automatic reporting. And at the end, simplifying the consumption processes, okay? Now we are, able, we are capable to quantify the savings, a eh, kilowatt, uh, hour to euro, dollar, whatever, okay, any, any other currency. Now we know uh, the, the, the money that uh, we are uh, wasting, we are consuming in, in, by creating different things, okay? And we are simplifying the energy management process. As I told you, uh, the report, the, we are making reports automatically that are sent to, to, the, to the responsible. And now let me talk a little bit about our, our analyzers, okay? Uh, because uh, we are focused on the new standards. Our analyzers are measuring the energy, obviously, uh, in fourth quadrants, consumption and generation. Uh, 
uh, active, reactive, apparent, apparent in total, in absolute or by tariff, okay, divided in different period of times, okay. We are measuring in display and by communication, CO2 emissions, okay. We are measuring also the energy cost. So now we can see the cost directly uh, on the display, okay, of the analyzer. We can see the euros, uh, dollars, whatever, okay, directly on the analyzer or by communications. And we are also showing the, the working time. This is for maintenance, uh, preventive maintenance, okay? If we, for example, if we have a fuel generator and we know that we have to change the filter ab after uh, 1,000 hours, okay? We don't have to wait and to check an Excel file to know when we made the, 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 the previous uh, uh, revision. Now we have analyzers that are measuring the time which are connecting and capable to send you an alarm in order to uh, do the maintenance when when you need in order uh, before arriving to uh, to these 1000 hours for example 990 and 90 uh, this will be able to send you a, an email or an alarm or whatever okay or a pop up into the software uh, telling uh, that you have to go and change the foil filter for maintenance because if you do not change and you have a problem and you have to start up the fuel generator, maybe it will not work eh? because uh, the fuel filter is 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 uh, is not clean. Okay, for example, so all the things that you see on on, on the on the display now are added uh, inside our analyzer. Okay, this is a small overview. We are not going to talk uh, uh, of each analyzer. Okay, just to have the overview that we have. Uh, uh, analyzers we call CBMs, okay, current voltage monitoring and CBM. Uh, we have one for secondary switchboards, okay, that we are showing the total harmonic distortion, but not the, the harmonics individually. We have inputs, outputs, outputs for controlling, relay and transistor output for controlling the installation. We have communications. Uh, uh, and we have, uh, and if you need more future, you have to move uh, on the left, okay? We, we move from C, B, and C4, so C, C10, B100, uh, B150, or A1500. C10 for distribution switch, switchboards, okay? Also with communications, input outputs, mobile back, magnet, and up to 31 harmonics. Now we are reading harmonics, okay? For uh, checking the quality of consumption. CBMB uh, is expandable. You can expand with more uh, modules, and we are reading up to 50 harmony. Okay. And CBMA is is thought to be installed in mains, in the power station, in critical lines, because we have database. Now we have a web server. We have a EMS software already integrated with memory. One year of data. We are reading up to 63 harmonics. Okay. Uh, we don't need a software. We don't know because we have that software inside. Okay, and also it's expandable. So this is the, 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 the overview of the of the devices that we have for panel, okay? And also we have the same for DIN rail. Depending on the country you are, sometimes you use DIN rail, sometimes you you use a panel, okay? For the DIN rail is the same. We have a simple analyzer without display, which is a CBM net. We have CBM net, uh, net for plus, uh, thought for to be installed in distribution switchboard or for branch monitoring, because with one device you can read that to 12 single phase lines or four three phase lines or make any combination single three phase okay with that channels so this is why uh, we this is used for distribution switchboards or branch monitoring able to read harmonics now we are also having the new CBM E3 mini with Wi-Fi and Ethernet and Bluetooth communications or in RF45. Now we have analyzers able to be connected to a Wi-Fi network. So you don't need to connect a, a communication cable. This is very, very, very important in some install installations, okay? If uh, we are talking about existing installations and we have if we have Wi-Fi um, uh, coverage, okay? We will be able to install a power analyzer uh, without the need of connecting the cable, okay? And also Bluetooth for uh, for uh, settings eh? for uh, for changing communication of the device. Just going with the mobile, you will be able to set uh, up the the communication of the device. And also we have a uh, Line CBN32, which is a new product that we are going to launch during the, this month. Okay, which also is expandable. Uh, it's also have having harmon individual harmonics. Okay, up to 40, and also a power quality counter. And this is uh, a device able to 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 read swells, sacks, and interruptions. Okay, and we have a, a counter. 
Well, this is the overview. We have different CVM thoughts to be installed in medium or low voltage, okay? Thought to be installed in mains. We have uh, product for distribution switchboards, okay? And we have products for secondary switchboards. Depending on your needs, uh, you have a, a different uh, wide uh, range of solutions. And we can, we're able to connect all the solution or solutions with an energy management software, okay? As I told you, through Ethernet, through FRFI, through Mobus, with different communication, we'll be able to connect everything with an EMS software, okay? When we connect all these devices, we will know what happened by the reporting, we will know what is happening by the real-time monitoring, we will know wh why it happens, okay, by making an analysis of the data that we have in the database, and we will know how to avoid it, okay? We will know how to make corrective action. If we are paying penalties by uh, reactive, we will know that we have to install a capacitor bank. If we are detecting harmonics, okay, that are creating uh, damages in the installation, unexpected trippings, whatever, we will note an active filter. Uh, if we are having uh, leakage, we're having residual current uh, leakage that are tripping the, the protection, we will need to change the protection to, uh, to ultra immunize or to type B or whatever. So, but having uh, all that information will be able to decide. And the idea of EMS software is to have information to, uh, to decide and to improve, to improve by improving the efficiency and to decreasing the, the bill. This is one example. Uh, this is our EMS software, Power Studio SCADA. This is circuitor, circuitor building, okay? This is a screen from our uh, SCADA. And you can see that we have uh, ISO 50001 certification. We are having a lot of devices and we control, we create groups, okay, of, of, of CBMs and devices for controlling the energy consumption in sales, in uh, engineering, assembling, and this by areas or by uses, lighting, aircon, industrial machine, uh, computers, electrical vehicle, and we know which is the highest consumption. So if we have to decide uh, for an improvement action, we will know uh, we'll know where to go, okay? Uh, and also we have uh, invoice simulation, okay? And here you, you can have some uh, some screens from, from the software. With an EMS software, we can have the consumption, we can see the different uses, you can see the different uh, <coughs> zones, but we can create diagrams like you see. It's a SCADA screen with diagrams with, uh, uh, with uh, our devices, with the protections, with the consumptions, also, we can calculate the PU, uh, PUE, sorry, uh, the effectiveness in the into the electronic devices that we have in our installations. And below on the right side, you will see an invoice. Okay, we are receiving at the end of the month automatically invoices, uh, telling how uh, much uh, energy have we consumed. If we have any penalty in reactive, in maximum demand, and we uh, know before receiving the official bill from from the from the from the uh, utility. Okay. Well, so we have been talking about analysis uh, uh, with fixed analyzers, eh? uh, and now we are going to talk about uh, performing an energy audit. Uh, but it means a measurement by a portable. All the devices have been shown in, in previous uh, in previous uh, webinars. Okay, I will I will do it very fast, but just to have the overview. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about my Evox. This is our portable uh, power quality analyzer. Okay, we can modify the measurement from anywhere in the wall. So this is why uh, we are describing this system like uh, closing the cycle. Okay, I, I, I always say it's closing the cycle because we can interact uh, in, in, in a bidirectional way. So it means we have a tablet, a smartphone with an a pre app that do add, uh, that can read in real time the analyzer, can program the analyzer, but this APP can send data to the cloud, which is also free, and the cloud can also contact with the analyzer. So now being in any place of the world, okay, we'll be able to read, uh, to record, to share f files, okay, and to control our installation. This is very, uh, very important to save in indirect cost, okay? We will see in, in the next, uh, next slide, okay, that sometimes we have indirect cost, and we have to go to the installations in order to modify uh, the connection of the devices, okay? Now, with our system, we are able to solve these kind of issues by using an, IP, uh, an APP, okay, by mobile or tablet. My Evox is a power quality analyzer with Wi-Fi and 3G connection, connection, okay? If you do not have a Wi-Fi network, you can place a SIM card, okay, with 3G connection. I will be able to read it from anywhere. 
Uh, Wi-Fi only user and password. We do not need to root it, very important. So we don't have to talk with IT people, only just connect to an SSID and password. Okay, and the same for 3G connection. Eh? APN, user, uh, and password, and we'll connect through the telecom network, okay? We can do the remote configuration, we can have register inside of the analyzer or in the cl cloud, we are able to share files very simple, in a very simple way, like Dropbox, and we are also talking about the power quality. We are detecting swell, sacks, interruptions, and transients, okay? And also parameters related to the power quality standards EN 50,160 or another standards uh, in, in different countries, okay? I mean, uh, we are reading the flicker, asymmetry, and balance, et cetera. Eh? We, we talk about this in, in, in a previous webinar that I made. Eh? Well, the connectivity of uh, my box, as I told you, Wi-Fi 3G, and we have two memories. We have the memory inside of the analyzer, and we have the memory on the cloud. Eh? We can send the memory, which is stored inside the analyzer, to the cloud, and to share this memory with uh, end users, with your customers. Okay. Well, talking about the, the analyzer, it's an analyzer with uh, fifth channels of voltage and current, uh, three voltages, neutral voltage, and uh, we are measuring also the neutral, neutral earth voltage. Okay. And the same uh, with the current, we have fifth channels, okay, three phases, neutral uh, current, and residual current, uh, residual current, okay for measuring the leakage. We have Wi-Fi, 3G antennas, and two transistor outputs, and two transistor inputs. The inputs are used for reading pulses coming from water, gas, heat, mechanical meter. So we are not just taking care about electricity, we are talking taking care about uh, different uh, sources, different consumptions, okay? The input can be also be used for checking the status of something, for example, protection on off, eh? or a detector or something like that. Uh, if the protection trips, uh, the input will change the status and we will be able to send an email uh, telling that uh, if anyone opens a switchboard, for example, a switchboard, uh, the status of the input will change and this will send us a, an email telling that something is happening inside the switchboard, okay? Or changing the tariff. Okay? If we are a dual source installation, we will be able to separate the consumption from grid or from the fuel or SI, eh? or UPS, sorry, uh, uh, UPS. And the transistor outputs are used for, for alarms, eh? open and closing, and closing the, the output in order to uh, connect, disconnect lines, uh, a light, a zone, et cetera, okay? And this product is able to be connected in medium or low voltage, okay? If we are talking about medium, obviously, we are talking about secondary eh? of the CTs and BTs. Well, as I told you, we have a free APP uh, that you are able to download, and it's very simple to be used. So now that we are doing uh, with this kind of devices is to simplify the things. Eh? In the past, we have to make a special the training to everybody to know how to connect with the analyzer, how to download the data, how the software is uh, is uh, working, how to manage uh, the software, etc., etc., etc. Right now, very simple. You install an IPP. Uh, you can see all the parameters, the harmonics, the waveforms, the events on real time, everything. You can see a table, you can see a graphs, you can make zoom in, zoom out, program, etc. in a very simple way, okay? So what do we try to do, circuitry is to connect with an, with an analyzer anywhere and make it, it very simple, okay? Uh, of course, uh, APP Store or Google Play, eh? iOS or, or Android, okay? Also, we, as I told you, we are able to solve a remotely installations problem with APP. A typical problem is that this one uh, that you see, this is one that uh, if we are not connecting the, the, the current clamp in the, in the correct way, we'll not measure correctly uh, the, the current. And we'll see as a negative in this, in this uh, example. If we have 10 plus 10 plus 10 should be 30. If we have 10 plus 10 minus 10 will be 10, okay? So we are not measuring correctly. If the line is balanced, well, you see 10 plus 10 plus 10, well, we know that we have to have 30, but this is unbalanced, you will never know, okay? The total energy, the total current. So if you go to the installation with a typical analyzer and you make this mistake, uh, you leave the analyzer one week and you uh, come again after one week uh, for uninstalling and unloading the data, you will see that you do not have uh, correct, uh, correct data. You have to measure again. But you have to make the trip. Uh, imagine, I see uh, people from Philippines uh, here in, 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 in the webinar. I remember when I stayed with, uh, with them in Philippines, uh, we 
took three hours uh, to, to do 30, 40 kilometers, okay? Three hours, so you have to take three hours for going, three hours for coming back to the office, waiting one week, again the same, three hours and three hours, and, and you have made a mistake, you have to do it again. So you will be losing time by by the vehicle, by engineering people, you have to take a plane, for example, whatever. You will be having costs, you have to sum different costs that uh, are indirect costs for us, okay? That will increase the, the will increase the measurements. Right now, what we are able to do with my box by pressing one button, swapping, swapping the current clamp and uh, and solving the problem. Okay, you can be inside of the installation and you don't have to touch again a switchboard. Okay, for security, you don't have to put the hands again inside the switchboard. You can do it by the APP. Only if you are not in the installation, you are in another city, in another country, you will be able to do it remotely with the APP. And the same when the voltage and current is not matching. Okay, voltage and current should be uh, measured by the same line. Okay, if you are not measuring current and voltage from the same line, you will not have uh, correct measuring in power factor, in power, in energy, in cost fee. So you have to come back again and to uh, change the cabling, etc. Now with the with the APP, you are able to match voltage and current remotely. Okay, and also the scale of the clamp. If you have made a mistake with the scale of the clamp remotely, you can change uh, you can change it. Okay. All those uh, here you have some uh, some uh, examples from the cloud. The cloud is free, and you can do uh, different uh, similar things that uh, that you can do with the APP. You can monitor graph or table uh, on real time. Okay, uh, you can open uh, files that you have uh, saved inside the analyzer and and check it. You can see the fast phase or diagram uh, to see if the voltages and currents are in the same line or not. Eh? So it will tell you you have to modify the cabling or not by the APP. Uh, you can start recording, you can stop recording, sharing a file, etc., 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 in a very simple way, as you as you can see. Okay, uh, so we have talked about uh, analysis. Now very fast, we'll talk about quality. Quality of consumption is a vital factor for ensuring regulatory compliance and service continuity. So we are going to talk about Harmonix very fast because we already have made the webinar regarding Harmonix. Very, very fast. Uh, we are able to use uh, harmonic filtering solutions inside the industry because in the industry we have harmonics because uh, all non-linear loads eh, uh, are creating harmonics and all the loads that are connecting to AC but internally have DC okay for being supplied these will create harmonics and eh? all the devices with AC DC conversion okay will create uh, which types, as you can see in the slide, air conditioning machines in any type of installation, fridge in supermarkets, pumping system in pumping station or industry, uh, automation and control system in the industry, office uh, equipment, computers or uh, LED lightings in offices, shopping centers, a BSD, variable speed drive in the industry, or electric vehicle recharging if in any type of installation. As you see, there are a lot of loads inside our installations that will create harmonics, okay? Which are the damages and effects of harmonics? Overheating the cables or the switchboards, uh, transformers and, engine and motors, okay? Uh, having more current uh, through the cables. If you have more, have more current in, in the cables, you can have you can have unexpected drippings of the MCBs, okay? And of the MCBs, because you are increasing the current, okay? If you have variable speed drive, you can have, uh, you cannot work properly eh, because you are adding different signals in high frequency uh, that can interrupt the communications and can make resets in the in the control uh, devices. Okay, you can have damages of the insulation of the cables. You are having more current, eh? so it depends on the section of the cables. If if it is not correctly set it eh, or defined you can have a, a, a loss of isolation and this can create an over voltage and can create a damage inside your electronics okay aging and damage the isolation okay and damaging electronic uh, cars having harmonics uh, will affect at the end to to your installation very fast something that we have already uh, shown okay we have active filters uh, called afqm okay rack type or wall mounted able to be connected in four wires or three wires, 400 volts or 480 volts, okay? And we have a wall mounted in 30, 60 or 100 amps or uh, rack type, uh, like a cubicle, okay? 
100, 200, 300, or 400 with four modules eh, of 800 each module. Uh, you can connect up to 100 devices in parallel. So you can have uh, as much uh, current as you need in any in any installation. Okay, with a very simple uh, system to to start up. Eh? We have a HMI display, okay, to touch display, and by connect able to connect, configure, configure, and start the filter. Eh? Very simple. We have also in our YouTube channel some uh, tutorials about how to program the active filter. Uh, I invite you to, to go there and to see the video with step by step, you will see how to enter uh, inside the menu, configure and start uh, the filter, okay? Well, how the filter is very fast is uh, working. Imagine that we have a non-linear load, okay, which is having injecting 10 amps of the fifth uh, harmonic. Well, the, the FQ or the active filter will read, so you need a current transformer, obviously. We, need, we will read the, the current, okay? And we will inject the same current in the opposite way. It means 190 degrees, uh, okay? In the opposite, in order to, uh, to eliminate this uh, harmonic, okay? To erase these 10 amps of, uh, of harmonic, uh, harmonic current, okay? Obviously, we want to reach zero value. We are, but we are not. Uh, we are not uh, describing that we are always reaching zero value. It will depend on the on the on the current of the of the filter. But we will reach a value very close to zero. Eh? What we want to do is get a value which uh, with no risks, uh, no risks uh, for the installation. Eh? A very low value of current that uh, will not create any kind of of risks. Uh, if the filter is oversized, obviously we will reach uh, zero amps. And this is how, how it works. Uh, you are inside of the industry. You have LED lighting, computers, UPS, uh, data processing centers, electrical vehicle recharge, and that will uh, create harmonics. Eh? Remember, ACDC. Uh, see the sinusoidal wave. Now it's not sinusoidal, okay? Uh, and this can create the damages that we have seen. So if you install an active filter upstream, you will clean and eh? you will clean the sinusoidal wave. Eh? Uh, when I mean clean, we will make the uh, the current sinu and the voltage sinusoidal, uh, the wave more sinusoidal, okay? So in subpanel B, in subpanel C, in main panel or in the power transformer, you will have a clean uh, waveform, okay? Not affecting, not affecting to the processes, not affecting to the cables, et cetera, et cetera. And with a harmonic uh, filter, with an active filter, sorry, uh, we can work in three ways. We can filter the harmonics, eliminate, erase all the harmonics. If we have more power, uh, we will be able to uh, correct the power factor, okay? And then uh, also we will be able to uh, balance the phases. Balance the phases means if you have an unbalanced an unbalance system, uh, an unbalanced installation, you will have current uh, through the neutral cable, okay? This neutral cable can have problems or the installation can have problems if you are uh, you are creating this current through the neutral by balancing the, by balancing the the, the the phases that what you will do is to avoid or to reduce this neutral current and to reduce the problems uh, that can create this neutral current okay so with an active filter it's not just used for filtering if we have more power it will be used for improving the efficiency of of the installation okay now uh, savings. The third point. Okay, we will make a, a webinar uh, regarding this uh, regarding this uh, these products. Okay, but uh, savings reduce the energy consumption is the key factor to achieve savings of the productive processes. We means that installing capacitor banks if we have penalties, we will reduce the bill at the end of the month. Okay, and we can have two types of penalties depending on the country. Eh? Uh, penalty by consumption consumption of inductive reactive energy uh, or uh, capacitive reactive energy. Okay, it depends on the country. In Spain, we used to have inductive, but this year also we will have capacitive. This is why uh, I wrote I I, I display uh, the example of Spain. Eh? Uh, this year, uh, uh, last year, we only pay penalties by reactive inductive reactive but this year also we are paying by capacitive. So this change a little bit the scenario and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Eh? For, uh, for reducing, for compensating inductive reactive energy, we need capacitor banks, okay? 
uh, we have capacitor bands with different powers, okay? And you will see in the webinar that we will do. But there are four types of capacitor banks. Uh, the first that you see here, Optim PMP or Optim FR PMP, uh, are capacitor banks with contactor switching. And we have a contactor inside. The first one, Optim PMP without reactors, Optim FR PMP with uh, rejection filters, with reactors. What does it mean? If we go to the industry and we are measuring with a power analyzer, portable or fixed, and we have harmonics, okay? These harmonics can damage the capacitors that you have inside the capacitor bank, okay? Because the, uh, the capacitor is absorbing, uh, absorbing all the harmonics that you can have inside the installation. If you absorb the capacitors, uh, the, the harmonics, you are overheating the capacitor and this will die and this will die in a, in a period of time, okay? So uh, this way we have, we are offering two things. Uh, we are offering a capacitor bank with or with, uh, without reactor, re reactor filter. In the installations that we have high uh, presence of harmonics, we will need reactor, okay? And in installations that we don't have uh, uh, a lot of uh, harmonics, uh, high uh, value of harmonics, we will be able to install capacitor banks without reactors. But we need to measure it eh, to, 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 to know to know which kind of, of reactor. And also we are talking uh, in both uh, that we are connecting the capacitor by contactors. So if you have a system with low uh, fluctuation of, 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 the, of the load, okay, low load variability, you can use contactors because to connect on this connect uh, the capacitors, you can take uh, some seconds because uh, the load that you have inside your installation. But what happens if you, we are talking about uh, installations with fast uh, load uh, variability, with high load variability, like in automotive, for example, eh, that we are using uh, spike welding, for example. Well, uh, with a contactor, we will not arrive uh, uh, to compensate the reactive energy because we are not so fast, okay? We need a faster system. So those uh, capacitor banks that you see, opting uh, E-series or opting uh, FRE, okay, uh, are capacitor banks uh, working with thyristors. Thyristor now is not a mechanical, eh? it's an electronic device. So also it's better to use a thyristor because you don't have maintenance eh? because it's not mechanical. The contactor will die after after some period of time because it's a mechanical thing. The thyristor, no, okay? You don't have to clean it like a contactor. So uh, the best decision, if you don't have information about uh, the installation that you are going to offer a capacitor bank, because you have received some measurements and you don't know the type of loads that you have inside of the, of the installation in the industry, go, always go to thyristors, eh? to uh, static contactor switching, okay? With or without filters, it will depend on the presence uh, of the harmonics inside the, the installations. And also take care about the brain. The brain of the capacitor bank is the uh, regulator. Eh? We have Computer Smart 3, it's the power factor relay regulator. This is three devices into one because we are connecting the steps, we are connecting the capacitors in order to decrease the reactive inductive. We are measuring like a power analyzer, okay? And we are protecting. We have uh, the possibility to connect an earth leakage, uh, to have a uh, residual current uh, protection, okay? Uh, so, uh, adaptable to the condition of installations, we are able to measure with one current transformer or with three. This is very important also uh, to take care about that, okay? Because if we are paying penalties due to capacitive, okay? Or if we are paying also, re uh, if we are paying um, penalties due to reactive, what we used to do is to connect one transformer in, into the line which has more consumption, okay? But uh, we can be over uh, in an overcompensation mode or we are able to not to compensate all the reactive inductive uh, energy. So if we want to reach uh, power factor one, okay, we should measure in three Current, with three current transformers because we are measuring the total Hermes value of the three phase line, okay? If not, we will be overcompensating or not uh, reaching the value that, that we need, okay? If we are overcompensating, we can have penalties by, by capacity. So if you don't have penalties, you can use one. If uh, you have unbalance or you have penalties, uh, we use please use three current transformers because you will read exactly the reactive energy 
that is flowing through your cables and you will connect the, the, the steps that you uh, really need to compensate it to cost fee, uh, the, to the cost fee that you said. Okay. As I told you, it's a power analyzer, it's a regulator, a power analyzer, more than 250 variables, and we are having alarms. Eh? We can connect through an EMS software also. We can connect through an EMS software, or we can see over the display because we have uh, also outputs for controlling the residual current protection, uh, for controlling uh, the over temperature. Eh? If the temperature increases in the capacitor band, this will uh, start uh, creating an alarm. Or, or anti-resonance protection. If there is a resonance inside of the system due to a, a capacitor is damaged, the regulator will disconnect some steps in order to save the, the capacitor bank, eh, avoiding this resonance. And this is, but this is only for uh, compensating the reactive inductive. Eh? We are adding capacitors in order to compensate the reactive inductive. But what happens if we have capacitive in our installations? The best way to reduce, to avoid the capacities, CPDs, for example, eh, DP, DCPs, data process, processing centers, okay? For example, systems with a lot of LEDs, uh, systems with a lot of UPS, okay? Uh, well, you will have a lot of capacity. If you have penalties, you cannot connect capacitor banks, obviously, and you cannot connect a reactor because it's very, very expensive. Uh, the best way is to use something called SBG, static, static bar generator, okay? This is an active compensation, 100% uh, immune, immune to harmonics. So it's the same, the same, uh, the same situation and, as the active filter, but now for compensating reactive, uh, uh, reactive uh, power or energy, okay? Inductive or capacitive, you can set a cost fee uh, you can set the cost fee that you want to reach inside the installation, can be capacitive, can be, uh, can be inductive, okay? And this will try to inject, uh, inject power in order to reach this cost fee. If you are in capacitive, you will move to inductive. If you are in inductive, you will move to capacitive in order to set cost fee one or power factor of one or the one that you set. We are using the same uh, HMI display as the FQM, for, uh, so it's the same situation to, to program the, the, the device, okay? Uh, as this is not passive, we are not using passive component, we are not using capacitor, we are not using a reactor, this is 100% immune. Eh? We are talking about power electronics. So we have power electronics, IGBTs, that are injecting current at the end, injecting a power, eh, in, order, in the opposite that the one we have inside the installations in order to eliminate, eh? eliminate the, the exceeding power. When we are talking about uh, the fourth point is service continuity. Guaranteeing the service continuity has a direct impact on the property rates. It means that if we have a production stop due to a residual current dripping, we will be losing money. Uh, <clears throat> so we have to avoid it, okay? Why? Uh, why? Uh, because uh, we need to, co to, to protect the installations. We need to protect the people who is working inside of the industry and we need to save, okay? Here you have a, a, a data. The wall average for direct death uh, from electric shock is 133 victims by country. This is taken uh, five years ago, I think. So maybe this, uh, this uh, value has increased, okay? But people is dying because we are not protecting correctly the installation. We are creating fires, okay? And more than, in, this is in Spain, eh? Uh, 70,300 uh, fires per year are produced in Spain due to poor electric installation. So we are losing our installations, okay? We're stopping. In in, um, in telecoms, okay? In uh, data data, pro, uh, in data centers, okay? 3,000 euros per minute if we are losing uh, connection, okay? If we have a shutdown, <laughs> it will mean that we are losing out of money, okay? And also in supermarkets, eh? we are losing uh, the products. We have to throw all the products if we uh, are losing the connection of, of the fridge, okay? Very fast, we have two uh, solutions. Type A, ultra-immunized ultra -immunized relays. We already talked about that eh, in a webinar, just for giving the overview on how to use it into the industry. Type A is for AC loads, okay? Type B is for DC loads or DC plus AC, okay? Later on, I will show you one slide trying to, 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 to talk in a little bit more about that, okay? Uh, ultra immunized also take care about that uh, our type a relays are ultra immunized it means that 
the tripping level is up to 85. It's, it's starting at 85 percent, okay? And if tripping, obviously at 100 percent, okay? The standard says if you have a mechanical one, not uh, ultra immunized, okay, it could trip from 50 to 100, okay? So it means if we have a relay set with 30 milliamps, with 16 milliamps, this, if, it, uh, if it is not ultra immunized, this can trip. 16, 17, 18, this can trip. Uh, with our devices, which are ultra immunized, will trip, uh, will ensure not tripping uh, with values below 24 milliamps in this example of 30, always is 85 up to 100%. Okay, uh, which solution we have for type A? Remember, AC loads, AC networks. We have RU10 and CBS4. RU10 is a residual current relay, okay, for one line. We have a, we have a toroidal for measuring the leakage, okay for one line. CVS4 is the same, but in, in the same uh, in the same uh, three modules, okay, we are capable to read up to four individual lines, okay? We are measuring uh, residual current leakage from different lines, four lines, okay? So we can reclose uh, the system, okay? We have uh, the, the, the ability with the outputs to create a remote management. We can trip uh, a main CV, for example, eh? we can we can send the signal for tripping when the when the when the residual current leakage is higher than the value that we have set. We see the value over the display. The display changes to red uh, when you have uh, uh, when when it is tripped. Okay, we have a pre-alarm. We have air for effect communication, so we can connect through the EMS software. Okay, so uh, if you are the maintenance manager by by uh, uh, by checking the, the the relay, if you go to the switchboard and you check the relay, you will see the status if it is green, if it is red. Okay, so if it is trip or not trip. Uh, uh, also, we have one device direct. Okay, uh, up to 63 amps. Okay, an MCB uh, called a Regmax CVM. This is self-reclosing over current and residual current protection relay with measurement. So what does it mean? We have a compact device, eh, which is an MCB. So we are tripping by overcurrent by short circuit. We have also RCD, Russian current um, uh, device. Okay, we are measuring the leakage. So we need a transformer, obviously, a toroidal. Uh, we will measure the leakage, and if there is a leakage, we will this will trip automatically, and it will reconnect. We have a, a reconnection system that we are trying to reconnect. Different uh, with different times, with different uh, with different uh, scale of times, okay, depending on the leakage that we have, okay, and we have a power analyzer. We have the measurement into one device, so MCB residual current device, and also a power quality uh, power analyzer, okay, more than 250 variables with inputs, outputs, and R5 communication to be connected with an EMS software. Okay, but this is direct. Have to 63 with self-reclosing systems. Okay, and this is only for self-reclosing. This is uh, earth leakage residual current protection with self-reclosing, 30 or 300 milliamps, two or four poles. Okay, when we have a fold, this will reconnect automatically. Okay, up to three times if the fold is uh, permanent. Okay, if the fold is permanent, only three times for saving uh, the installation and, and, and the people avoiding production or service stops or eliminating the risk uh, of fire, okay? So you have an installation on the mountain, mountain and you have a fault due to, for example, a light or something like that, uh, and it is not permanent, the relay, the, the, the REC4 will reconnect the system without the need to send anyone there, okay? And type B. Type B is exactly the same uh, situation, but uh, for DC loads or DC plus AC. Okay, when we have loads like variable speed drive, like cli uh, clima stations, like uh, UPS, like uh, re electrical recharge of vehicles, etc., etc., uh, we are having, uh, we are consuming AC and DC. You have an internal DC bus. Okay, in and this bus can 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 leak it the bus. So you have a leakage or, uh, with DC component, okay? The type A relays will not be able to trip correctly, okay? Later on, we will see the, the effects, okay? But will not work correctly. Uh, if you want to ensure the correctly tripping for saving people and saving installation, you must must eh, uh, go to uh, type B. We have RGU 100 and B, CBS 400 and B. 
is the same uh, is the same concept as uh, are you uh, are you on CBS four? Okay, are you ten on CBS four? Uh, oh, I have not uh, I have not translated it. Sorry, um, it is in Spanish. Later on, I will I will do it in English. Right, let me check here in Spanish. Well, it's the same. Uh, three into one: protection, prevention, and remote management. Uh, avoiding uh, trips. Okay, unexpected trippings. Uh, is I will do it. I will show in this way. Okay, avoiding unexpected trippings. Uh, uh, four and five communication and alarms. Uh, able to be configured. Okay, and the display will change in this case from white to red when this is trip. Okay. Uh, we have also. Uh, rec, uh, rec B, okay. This is uh, only four poles. There is also a mistake here. It's four poles, okay. 3300 milliamps, okay. For the same situation, and, and Rec 4, okay. For reconnecting the system when there is a non permanent fault, okay. This will reconnect up to three times if the fault is not permanent. So if you are using this uh, self reclosing system, you should connect with type B loads. Variable speed drive, uh, whatever, eh? all the loads climate that we have seen. Type B considerations, uh, very simple. If you have, if you install Type A in installations with DC residual currents, you can have two effects. The relay could trip with a very low residual current, okay? You can have unexpected trippings. This will create indirect cost because you are like stopping the production, okay? Uh, the OPEX will, will be increased, okay? Losing money. But because the type A is not uh, is not uh, designed to read DC current. Eh? This is what could happen. Eh? Do not understand what is happening. Do not understand the DC current. I will trip. Or in the other way, could not see. Could not see. Can be can be blind. Okay, and not trip. So this can create a fire. Okay, or shock risk to to people. Eh? If there is a fault more than in this case 30, 300, whatever. If it's more than some uh, some milliamps. The relay is not tripping, and you touch uh, and you touch uh, uh, this part of installation, you can be shocked, on, uh, or you can create, or this situation can create a, a fire. Okay, and just for finishing, the manufacturers of ACDC devices like variable speed drives, okay, and they are telling that if you protect the device, you should uh, use a Type B relay, eh? variable speed drive, uh, frequency converters, uh, etc. And this is, for example. A variable speed drive from Alan Bradley. Okay, this is the manual. If you open the manual, you will see that if you want to protect every uh, this device, you should use Type B protection. Okay, and finishing. Okay, uh, sustainability. Self-producing energy generates a decrease in production costs in industry, as well as helping to maintain the ecosystem of the planet Earth. Okay, what does it mean? What does it mean that uh, you can, uh, if you are able to generate energy, you will decrease the bill at the end of the month, okay? And you will be not using, uh, um, uh, you will not be using uh, energies coming from other sources which are not clean, okay? You will uh, you will use, for this, in this example, with the canopy, you will use the sun energy, okay? Uh, Circuitor is offering this kind of solutions. Okay, for finishing, we have canopies, okay? Uh, for instantaneous self-consumption uh, for parkings, okay? You can park your car, uh, <clears throat> okay, in the shadow, and you can use the roof uh, for generating energy, okay? You can have uh, canopies only for one vehicle. You can have canopies with more than one vehicle, eh, double for two vehicles, and you can have also canopies with recharge of electrical vehicle uh, insert it in, in inside, okay? Uh, of course, uh, you will be generating energy. This will be injected to your industry, so you will not be consuming this energy from uh, the grid, from the utility, okay? So you are avoiding consuming this, uh, this energy from the grid. And if you are using also uh, the, uh, the recharge of electrical vehicle, this will be a low, a, 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 a more load in in the in the industry so it's, it's an, an a new load okay so it means that uh, you will be adding a consumption it means that you we are not using we are not using the the energy that we are generating only uh, to recharge the the vehicle that we have connected we have energy this energy is going to the industry and the electrical vehicle is one more load okay that will consume uh, the kilowatt hours that 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 it needs okay 
but uh, this will help us to, to reduce uh, and to improve the, the energy efficiency. And just for finishing, <clears throat> this is the last uh, slide. Uh, please feel free to join to our uh, newsletter. If you enter to circutor.com and you go to our web page, you will uh, find the sign up uh, button to our newsletter, okay? Because we will be uh, telling uh, all the news that we are going to launch, uh, if we are going to make new webinars, if we are going to add the videos in our system, okay? All that information will be will be uh, will be done by by our newsletter, okay? And with that, uh, ten minutes later, I'm sorry, but we got finished.